tonight. From State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals taking on Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Valley of the Sun at State Farm Stadium here in Glendale. It's certainly hot outside here in the desert, but somehow this Cardinal crowd turned up the heat a moment ago. They were in a frenzy as their team emerged from the tunnel, and the Cardinals, they're set to do battle with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's Mike Nugent now to put this one in the air. And this one is underway here on EA Sports. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. Here are the Steelers making their way out, and with their longtime starter, Ben Roethlisberger, leading the way. And for Ben Roethlisberger, there are a lot of question marks coming into this year because he missed nearly all of 2019 with an elbow injury. And if he were younger, maybe not as many questions. But he turned 38 back in March. And now the Pittsburgh Steelers expect to see the old Ben Roethlisberger, who's thrown over 56,000 yards in his career, leading their team. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and ten. No gain on the play. Brings up second and ten. At the 25-yard line. Shotgun handoff to Samuels. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Bring it up in. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it'll be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. for the 2018 Pro Bowler, James Conner. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. From the 40 now on second down, Roethlisberger. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver out of the backfield was Jalen Samuels. And now it's third down. the gun. It's Roethlisberger. Ebron's got it. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end and he comes through for him picking up the first down. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Roethlisberger throwing complete to McDonald. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. Looking deep downfield. Now they're staring at a fourth down as Arizona's defense does its job. An early message that this secondary is going to be tested because even though it fell incomplete, it almost felt like a warning shot to get things going. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. The Cardinals coming out led by Kyler Murray, the offensive rookie of the year a season ago, and back for more here in year number two. I still remember being in Indianapolis at the Combine when the result of Kyler Murray's height was announced. 
And when the tape measure showed him at a little bit above 5'10", all doubts went out the window, and rightly so. The Cardinals went 5'10 and won with him last year, but he was the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. This guy can make great plays with his arm, can scoot with his feet, and has motivated this team and has him on a really good upward trajectory. And he powers through the first wave, but he's going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Well executed there on second down, so do you go back to the air on third? Well, that's a possibility, but now you've opened up things to where you showed that you would run the ball in long-distance situation. You might come back again because I doubt they believe you'll do it a second time. And he is not going to get the first down as he'll spot this at about the 28. The keeper nets him only a yard, and that's going to bring up fourth. So still a scoreless game in the first, but they're going to go for this thing on their own side of the field on fourth down. We're scoreless after one. But here we go on fourth down with Murray. And he's got Fitzgerald. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it. But in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. The broken tackle couldn't create a ton of space. He'll be taken down just beyond the 35-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Three-yard pickup. Brings up second and seven. Out of the gun, here's Murray. And this one caught by Max Williams. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the short catch and flip the down marker back to run. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. And that one heck of a run right there. Once he got loose, you could tell that he was going to run a long way. That was pretty impressive. And there's an old chestnut of an expression called getting on your horse. And I hate to use it, but I'm going to right here because it absolutely applies. How about the head of steam he had behind him? He was absolutely galloping downfield. That was something to see. And if you look at the next-gen stats, you'll see that he topped out at an even 21 miles an hour. Coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. This is unbelievable. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call, but they're usually spot on. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by the all-pro safety, Mika Fitzpatrick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points no matter what. At worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. That one caught by the rookie, Chase Claypool. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 
First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. It's a gain of eight. Brings up second and two. Throwing again on second down. Roethlisberger able to hit his target, Claypool. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 42. Now a timeout called for by the offense as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. To throw again is Roethlisberger. He's going to go for a big play down. Got a man. It's caught inside the ten. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Chase Claypool, 42 yards, as his guys are on the board first here tonight. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. So that drive, four plays. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded in the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. That's Vince Williams who gets the sack. Throwing on second and long. Murray, he's going to take off with it. Room past the 20. Finally taken down at the 32-yard line. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Shotgun now for Murray, buying time to his left. And now he's gonna use his legs. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry, we'll see. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. Throwing on first down is Murray. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? And after that touchdown, we are just a PAT away from a tie game. And I know everyone's going to look at it and go, guess what? Tie game, all even. Uh-uh. Could they just score it? If they kick this extra point and tie it, they're going to feel like they're the ones that are in control. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a tie ball game here heading to break. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 our score. On the return, here's Edmonds. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. 
So here's the Cardinals offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything's working pretty well for the defense. Yeah, what's guy, going on on the defensive that's side? That's a tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. Avery Williamson there to make the stop. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They stay on the ground with Drake. Seven. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, there's someone who's running the football with a big smile go, on his face. That's Kenyon Drake, because you remember last year he was in Miami, wasn't getting many carries, not a lot of success, but a good season, ended up in Arizona and became a huge weapon for the Cardinals. Eight touchdowns the second half of the season, utilized really well. Big time skilled player who can run it and catch it out of the backfield. He has finally found a home and a place for his talents. And this is gonna be caught. Yeah, he won yeah, the yeah, for the yeah. football. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. That was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. He was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Running from the shotgun with Drake. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Third quarter. All tied up. This is second and 10. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 30. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Well, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He can see the play developing right in front of him, and once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, he's just going to keep right on going. And if you look at the next-gen stats, you'll see that he topped out at an even 21 miles an hour. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets them back now for second down. From the gun, Murray. And Hopkins has got it. Touchdown, Arizona. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Cardinals have taken the lead. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Extra point coming now for Nugent. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona. Touchdown. Here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. 
The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. Three yards the game there, second down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now second and seven from the 23. Now the pass finding its way into the hands of Eric Ebron. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They'll try and run for it with Connor. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It's a nine-yard gain. And it keeps the drive moving. First down by James Conner, and this Pittsburgh team is really hoping he's back in form because last year the entire Pittsburgh offense suffered without Ben Roethlisberger, quarterback. James Conner only 715 combined yards, but in 2018, he was a Pro Bowl running back. Combined yardage that year, 1,470. They're hoping for 2018 James Conner in 2020. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To throw here, Roethlisberger. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Another try after the first down sack. Roethlisberger and only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Jalen Thompson picks it. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners who have had the receivers on lockdown. So good field position for the Cardinals as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll start the drive with Drake. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Right back to Drake. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's in. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what'll be an important third down. To throw is Murray. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Hey, baby, this ain't good enough for us. 
Well, you won't hear any boos from this home crowd on that call. No, not at all. And it's been a long day for this crowd waiting for this game. It's been a long evening as well. Finally, they feel they got a call. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's Murray from midfield. Forced out to his left. He'll run it. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. I'll tell you, if you lined up Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson for a foot race, I think Kyler Murray might just be a bit faster. And boy, was he moving there. Incredible. And normally when you see guys moving this fast, it might be a fly pattern from a receiver or a toss sweep from a tailback or something like that. This was designed as a passing play, and then he got out of the pocket, and he just took off, and he just kept gaining momentum with every step. And if you look at the next-gen stats, you'll see that he topped out at an even 21 miles an hour. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Murray to give, this is great. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. Second and long, but you got to figure this almost certainly another run. They'll keep it on the ground. Drake and a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. And yeah, that will be incomplete. Offense tried to get a little slick there and sneak the back out of the backfield and turn him into the primary deep receiver. But it's good coverage defensively. They were able to break it up. And this one is right down Broadway. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. Steelers 7. So barring something extraordinary here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Yeah, I mean, we've got to find two scores. So, you know, we're not going to exactly move it over there yet. It can be done, but boy, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch for them, isn't it? Yeah, they would have to move incredibly quick and have some luck, too. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So Ben Roethlisberger and the offense down by 10, a little under 50 seconds to go. Their offense has struggled all night, and now they need to find two scores late to try to pull this thing out. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He'll get this to Connor underneath. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Three yards the game there, second down. He's going to let it fly. And this one is incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time. And it's third down. This is Johnson, he's got it. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. The intended receiver there, the rookie Chase Claypool. That'll bring up second down. One last shot for Roethlisberger. Now a desperation throw, deep depth, and that's caught inside the 35. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 34-yard line. So it's a win here for the Arizona Cardinals. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second-half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.
So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Cardinals as we say so long from Glendale.